when they can't make sumo. You get your friends together and you fake some sumo. Hey, 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 yeah, yeah. It's the not so, not so basho. Not so basho, basho, yeah, yeah. Not so, not so basho. Not so basho, yeah. Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown. This is Ryan. This is Jake. And this is going to be our Bonske prediction episode for the Not Goya Basho. Uh, so we finished up the Not So Basho uh, about a couple of weeks ago. And so just going to take the results from that and figure out what the Bonske will look like moving forward. Wow, that's, that's two Basho in a row with nicknames. That's kind of cool. Yeah, it is real nice. I'm going to go ahead and apologize in advance. I did a, I did a silly thing today. Um, I watched both Sophie's Choice and Requiem for a Dream. So I'm oh, no. I'm not feeling great. No. Why why would you do it's, that? It's been a day. <laughs> 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 well, they're both movies that I've been meaning to watch, and I saw that they were both available on HBO, and I'm like, what the hell? I'm having a good day so far. Let's screw <laughs> that up. <laughs> I, so, I yeah, can't I, say that I've seen Sophie's Choice, but I've seen Requiem for a Dream, and that one by itself will mess you up. Yeah, honestly, I think uh I think Sophie's choice was harder. I mean, yeah, I mean the the whole choice like do you Well, kill yeah, your but I mean dying like in, mom or do you or do you go to the moon? Daughter? I don't I have no idea what the choice is. I assume somebody's dying. Yeah, and space travel and all sorts of stuff. Oh, that's a good know. turn I wasn't expecting. Are you sure you weren't <laughs> watching Galaxy Quest again? You know, I have been known to do that, but not this time. No, no, I, Galaxy Quest doesn't uh, doesn't make me feel this bad later. So, pretty sure that wasn't it. <laughs> so, yeah, right. I'm here to uh, I'm here to just quietly sob in the background while you talk uh, talk our way through the Bonske. You know what? If there's an episode where we're just going to have you be quiet in the background, this is the one because I can pretty much just monologue through this whole thing if I wanted to. Yeah, I'm just going to stare into space. You go ahead. I'll step in when I feel like uh, sobbing louder. Sounds good. So let's start the monologue, as always, with the Yokozuna. On the east side, we will have Hakuho, and on the west side, we'll have Kakuryu. No change from the previous Basho, as Hakuho had the superior Basho to Kakuryu. Hakuho with his 11-4 and record, Kakuryu with the 8-7 and record. Uh, moving on to Ozeki, we're just going to have one Ozeki, unfortunately, going into the Natsugoya Basho, and that is going to be Asanoyama. Uh, so Takakesho's losing record that he had in the Natsu Basho will secure his second demotion from the rank of Ozeki. Uh, but never fear, Asanoyama won't be completely alone because we have the triumphant return of Yokozuna Ozeki. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, the most hype that that's ever going to get. Uh, so Kakuryu's name will once again be double wide on the printed Bonske to cover up the empty Ozeki slot uh, just to keep both sides of the Bonske even and making sure that you have an Ozeki on both sides of the Bonske. Yeah, which it's is extremely consequential. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and so it's going to be Kakuryu because he is on the west side of the Bonske as he will be the West Yokozuna and the empty Ozeki slot will also be on the west side. So that is why it is Kakuryu that will once again be taking the reins of Yokozuna Ozeki, which once again means absolutely nothing beyond his name is a little bit bigger on the physical Bonske. I wonder if anyone has had this honor twice before. I think we talked about it in the last time that this came up and i think so it's happened for like a couple basho in a row before uh Ah, okay so i'm pretty sure somebody has yeah and uh i think it would be really funny if uh let's see is there any way that we could get yet another basho in a row with a change to the ozekis mitaki yumi doing really well getting promoted or just takakesho getting his 10 and going back up yeah, that's true. Yeah, so so what we could do, we get Takakesho doing well, going back up. Mitaki Yumi like ten or eleven wins, not quite enough to bump him all the way back up to Ozek or up to Ozeki. And then the next one, when we're in Aki, then Mitaki Yumi has his third straight ten eleven win performance, and then he is up to Ozeki just to continue that string of always having a new Ozeki. And at this point, I'm assuming Asanoyama has had back-to-back losing records, so he's going to be dropping down for Kyushu. Naturally. 
and we could just keep this going for a very long time. Yep. Yeah. But we're, as it's written, it is impossible to have the same set of Ozeki for more than one Basho. If somebody has been watching Sumo for about a year and a half, they might believe that to be true. <laughs> So let's move down to the Sekiwake rank, where on the east side we will have Mitaki Yumi, who had that 13 and 2 Yusho winning performance. And on the west side, we will have Shodai. So this is kind of an interesting thing that it, it happens with the Yokozuna and Ozeki. It's the same with the Sekiwake. As long as all Sekiwake have a winning record, they're just going to be rearranged based on who had the best record in the previous. Basho. So Mitaki Yumi having that 13 and 2 record, he is going to be your top Sekiwake Shodai having a winning record, but only an 8 and 7 record. He's technically kind of moving down on the Bonsuke a little bit as the west side is a little less prestigious than the east side. Yeah, is uh, this um is this like the only situation where somebody could get technically demoted for a winning record? I believe so, yeah. I don't think there's like once you're in the Maigashira ranks, there's no time where like if you're Magashira one east and you have a eight and seven record and your Magashira one west had a nine and six record, but then like everybody in the Sanyaku ranks had a winning record, so nobody's dropping out of it, uh, then they wouldn't jump the Magashira one west over the eight and seven Magashira one east. Actually, they'd probably make a third Komosubi slot for that eight and seven Magashira one. Uh, but once again, now we're just going into hypotheticals that we don't even need to talk about at this point. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're we, we're totally not doing any hypotheticals whatsoever this month. No, 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 no. This is very serious and reality. <laughs> yes, of course. Of course. And then we are going to have a third Sekiwake, and that is going to be Takakesho. Uh, and typically your. Like he's Sekiwake two, and typically that would be on the east side because you always have like the east before the west. But Takakesho is going to be coming in on the west side because we do have Asanoyama as the sole east Ozeki. There is no west Ozeki, so you're going to put Takakesho on the west slot of the uh, second Sekiwake rank uh, to balance out the Sanyaku ranks. Right, right. Because, you know, there's 42 guys, you got 21 on each side. We've seen that in the past where sometimes a, a third Sekiwake or, or, you know, extra Komasubi or something like that, somebody will just be like sitting there on the west side for some reason. Yeah. Now, if we had like two Yokozuna, two Ozeki, and three Sekiwake, then he'd be on the east side because there's nothing to uh, balance out there. It, it would end up being unbalanced, but there's nothing you can do when there's an odd number of Rikshi in the Sanyaku ranks. But if, if they have a chance to balance it out like this, they will. Cool. And so Takakesho, of course, always the demoted Ozeki is the lowest ranked Sekiwake. So that is why he is the Sekiwake uh, to West and Mitake Yumi and Shodai are ahead of him. Let's move down to the Komosubi rank, where we will have Daesho remaining as your Komosubi East. He had an 8-7 and seven record, his first winning record, as a Komosubi, but that will not be enough to force a fourth Sekiwake slot, especially since a third one is being opened up. you got to do real, real good to open up a fourth one there. And then on, and it's Daesho. We just don't really need him to go any higher either. Yeah, exactly. And then on the west side of the Komosubi rank, you're going to have Yu Takeyama, who will, we assume, as long as this happens, he will be making his Sanyaku debut. I don't really see anybody that can realistically compete for that spot with Yu Takeyama, so he should be making his Sanyaku debut at Natgoya. That's kind of interesting. He's He's been around long enough as like a prospect kind of level guy that... Uh, it's kind of surprising to me. He hasn't even made Komasubi before. Yeah, he he did real well in that Basho that I was amazing everybody in our recap episode uh, with my memory of Yutakeyama's oh, right. great Basho that time. <laughs> so he jumped up to the uh, joy after that Basho and did really bad in that tournament. And then he kind of suffered some injuries and so this is kind of the first time that he's actually been back up into the joy since then. Gotcha. So let's move into the rest of the joy and the zone of death at Maigashira one on the east side. We should have Taka no show. And on the west side, we should have Ono show. Both of those guys 
had a eight and seven record from the Magashira two rank. So they're just going to jump up one rank to the Magashira one rank. Uh, so mathematically, a couple of other contenders that could have ended up there. Uh, Aoyama and Chio tied you. Uh, if you use the formula of like wins minus losses equals the amount of ranks you should jump up. Those guys are in contention for Magashira one. Uh, but Taka no show and no show will get priority over them uh, because they are both in the they faced a full slate of Sanyaku Rikshi where Aoyama may have as well at Magashira four. Chio Taidu definitely did not, uh, but they're not going to jump like Aoyama up to Magashira one east and then only move Taka no show and no show up a half step each. Yeah, yeah. No, that that makes sense because uh, with a couple dropouts, let's see. So Aoyama would have been in the full on joy, but we did have a couple of dropouts. He may not have had to face everybody that was difficult, but yeah, yeah. That, that makes sense. You know, higher, higher strength of schedule, higher benefit of the doubt for promotions. Yep. Moving on to Maigashira 2, that is where we will have the two aforementioned guys, Aoyama and Chiyo Taidu. Uh They were obviously in contention with that Maigashira 1 rank, so I think they will both end up at Maigashira 2. Moving on to Maigashira 3, on the east side, we should have Hokuto Fuji, and on the west side, we should have Toku Shoryu. Uh, these are the two guys that make the most sense here with Hokushori, or Hokuto Fuji moving up two ranks after his 9 and 6, Toku Shoryu moving up four ranks after 10 and 5. Uh, if anything, these guys are being under-promoted, uh, but as we discussed, everybody ahead of them deserved it more by either being ranked higher or having a better record than them. Uh, so, but that's kind of the story for this Bondscape for the most part is just things really seem to fall in line pretty well. It's like, okay, yeah, Hokuto Fuji and Toku Shoryu deserve to be at this rank. There's really nobody else to really put here. So it, it's not that hard. These guys go here. And that's that's just kind of how it is for the most part. We don't have any Owen 15 Rikshi in the joy and uh, try to figure out how far they will fall. We don't have like any 14 and one Maigashir 17s to try to figure out how far they will rise. Yeah. None uh, of that. Bull. Yeah. And there's like really no areas where no Rikshi like fairly deserves to be ranked. So this actually falls out uh, pretty, pretty simply for the most part. There is one spot towards the bottom of the bond where there's a small pile up that's uh, fairly easily taken care of. So we will keep going through at the Maigashira 4 rank on the east side. We will see Ishiura, and on the west side, we will have Takara Fuji. Uh, so despite me saying that this is fairly simple, there's still going to be minor things that come up. And so I wasn't sure if we should place Takara Fuji at Maigashira 4 west. He had a 7-8 and eight record at Maigashira 3. Or if the falling Komosubi Okinoumi, who had a 5-10 and 10 record, uh, if he should go here, ultimately I went with Takata Fuji because you rarely see a joy Rikshi drop two ranks after a seven and eight record. Uh, they tend to treat those guys fairly well at the top of the bonds K and only drop them like a half rank or one numbered rank. You don't see them drop like two numbered ranks very often in the joy. Yeah, this is uh, the first time that it will come into play that Ishiura and Hakuho can't face off. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Which, uh, unfortunately, at, if everything fell in line, uh, sorry, sorry to spoil your, spoil your next one, but Okinoumi would be the guy who would have to step up to face Hakuho instead of Ishiura. Uh, yep. Yeah, and we all saw or, how well that went for Okinoumi in the previous tournament. That poor son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, uh, Okinoumi will also be pulled up to face Takakesho as Takanosho cannot face Takakesho. He'll also have to face like Shodai at Sekiwake because um, Yutakayama can't face Shodai there in the same oh, yeah. stable. He'll also have to face Kakuryu because, oh no, never mind. Kiribayama won't be in the joy anymore in this tournament to face Kakuryu. So that been Obi might be able to avoid Kakuryu pending no injuries at the top yeah, of the but one guy drops out before cocker you can face him and uh then okinomi even being out of the joy will have to face both of the yokozuna yeah uh and so let's move on to let's get out of the joy takara fuji at magashir 4 re- west was our last rikshi that will be in the joy and so at magashir 5 on the east side as jake said i have okinomi going there and on the west side i have kageyaki 
dropping one rank uh, from the Migashira four rank where he went seven and eight. So there is one person that kind of threatened to take Kagayaki or Okinomi spot here. And that is Sada Naomi uh, by his 11 and four record for Migashira 12. You'd say, okay, that's about a seven numbered rank jump up. He would also deserve to be at this Migashira five rank. Uh, but we kind of have three clashing things that uh, usually happen and all three of them can't happen. So for Kakayaki, usually a seven and eight Rikshi in the joy does not drop down two numbered ranks, as we just talked about with Takada Fuji. Uh, for Sada Naomi, never in the history of sumo wrestling has an 11 and four Rikshi that was ranked Maigashir 12. Has he been promoted to lower than Maigashir a five? It's only happened 26 times, uh, but that's still a decent sample size to say that no M12 Rikshi to go 11 and four has been ranked below Maigashir five on the next bonds K and for Okinomi only once in 233 cases has a Komosubi with a five and 10 record dropped to the Maigashir six rank. So one of these guys has to do something that rarely happens and drop down to Maigashira 6. And so I've said previously on these Bonds K episodes, I'm not going to predict something to happen that has never happened before. Uh, But, well, I'm going to go counter to that. Uh, So I'm going to say that Kagayaki, I think, is the real guy that was in danger of being demoted to Maigashira 6 instead of Sada Naomi ending up there. But I am going to say that Sada Naomi uh, for the first time in sumo history, I think he's going to end up at Maigashira 6 after getting 11 wins at the Maigashira 12 rank. Uh, the reasoning that I went with the thing that has never happened is there is a much smaller sample size for a great Maigashira 12 than a mediocre Maigashira 4. Uh, and so like you don't see that Maigashira 4 drop down very often. And so I'm also giving Kageaki the benefit of the doubt because he faced a full Sanyaku schedule and those guys always get the benefit of the doubt. Fair enough. So at that Maigashira six rank on the east side, we will have Sada no Umi. And on the west side, I'm predicting Kiti Bayama, who had a six and nine record at Maigashira three. And so starting with Kiti Bayama, this is where we really get in a groove for a couple of ranks. We don't have anybody. We completely don't have anybody competing for any ranks. Everything just kind of makes sense mathematically. So like I said, Kiti Bayama dropped three numbered ranks after a six and nine record difference of three between those. Uh, Magashir seven on the east side. We have Diuden dropping one numbered rank after his seven and eight record on the west side. I believe we will have Endo dropping six numbered ranks after his four and 11 record. Not quite the seven that you would expect from four and 11, but it's within that range. Uh, and then at Magashira 8, on the east side, we have Abi dropping three numbered ranks after a 6-9 and nine record. On the west side, I've got Nishkigi jumping up eight numbered ranks after an 11-4 and four record. And then at Magashira 9 east, we have Kodo Shogiku jumping up five numbered ranks after his 10-5 and five record. So just a nice streak where just all of the numbers work out perfectly for those guys. There isn't anybody else to compete for those ranks. It's just Real nice and easy. We like that. Yeah, whoever planned out this Basha did a great job for this section of the Bonske. Oh, yeah, just the forethought that they had in putting this together was amazing. (laughs) And But unfortunately, Maigashira 9 West ends our nice little streak where uh, the jumps and drops make sense. Uh, So there are three people to consider for this Maigashira 9 West rank, and that is Wakataka Kage, Enho, or show hose on either one of these guys is either going to get over promoted or under demoted a little bit. Uh, so one of these guys is going to get that Mega Shira nine West slot. And then the other two will get the Mega Shira 10 ranks. So if we kind of look at the percentages for each of these three guys, uh, we see like Enho is a Mega Shira six with a five and 10 record. It's not very often where, that guy only drops down to Maigashira 9. I think it was just like a 4%. Uh, 4% of the time, 
where a Mike Shira six gets a five and 10 record that they only dropped to Mike Shira nine uh, for show Hozon, who is a Mike Shira 12 with an eight and seven record. I, when I crunch numbers, it's like 25% of the time that guy will jump up to Mike Shira nine and Wakataka Kage with a nine and six record from Mike Shira 14. It's about 20% of the time that that will happen. So I'm immediately eliminating Enho from the contention for that Mike Shira nine West spot. And so out of Shohozan and Wakataka Kage, based on the numbers, it's kind of leaning towards Shohozan. Uh, but when I'm in doubt, usually go with the guy who has the better record, especially when you're at the bottom of the Bonske. So at Maigashira 9 West, I'm going to put Wakataka Kage there, which means at Maigashira 10 on the east side, we will have Shohozan, and on the west side, we will have Enho. Yeah, there's not a huge gap in the competition they faced either, so... That makes sense to me. Oh, yeah. Shohozan Wakataka Kage fought most of the same schedule, I would guess. Uh, probably both of them did the full Koto. Um, and so, yeah, just makes sense to go with the guy with the better record at that point. So we'll move on to the bottom of the Bonske at Maigashira 11 on the east side. I've got Koto Shoho and on the west side, I have Takayasu. And so this is where we're going to start to run into our pile up that I mentioned before. We have six guys that deserve to be ranked Maigashira 12 based on the numbers. Uh, luckily, uh, by the numbers, no one deserved the Maigashira 11 rank. Uh, so two of the Maigashira 12s will get the Maigashira 11 rank. Two will be properly ranked at Maigashira 12. And then the remaining two will either be over demoted or under promoted and end up at Maigashira 13. Uh, so, kind of as I mentioned with the mini pile up we had at Maigashira 9 West with Wakataka Kage, Shohozan, and Enho, when in doubt, go with the best record. And so, basically, how I'm dealing with this is just placing them exactly by their record. So, the six guys that mathematically deserve to be Maigashira 12 are Teretsu Yoshi, who had a 5-10 and 10 record at Maigashira 7, Tamawashi, who had a 6-9 and 9 record at Maigashira 9, Shimano Umi, who had a 7-8 and 8 record at Maigashira 11, Takayasu, with an 8-7 and 7 record at Maigashira 13, Koto Nowaka, who also had an 8-7 and 7 record at Maigashira 13, and Koto Shoho, who had a 9-6 and 6 record at Maigashira 15. So the best record out of those ranks are Koto Shoho and Takayasu uh, with the nine and six and eight and seven records respectively. So they get the Maigashira 11 ranks. Why do I go with Takayasu over Koto Nowaka? They both have the same record at the same rank. Well, Takayasu is on the east side, which means he was ahead of Koto Nowaka. So he will be uh, ahead of Koto Nowaka. In my heart and on the sheet. Yes. <laughs> Then at Maigashira 12 on the east side, that's where we will have Koto Nowaka. And we're just going to continue to go with records to determine the order of the rest of Maigashira 12 and 13. So Shimano Umi had the next best record at 7 and 8. So I got him at Maigashira 12 West. And at Maigashira 13 on the east side, Tamawashi had the next best record, followed by Teretsu Yoshi, who had the worst record out of all of those guys to finally clear up that six person pileup that we had at Magashira 12. Luckily there weren't any guys competing for Magashira 11 and there's just a couple of guys competing for Magashira 13. So the pileup doesn't like continue to grow as we go further down the ranks. It's just one spot with a little bit of trouble, but we're easily able to uh, maneuver around that. Moving on to the Maigashira 14 rank on the east side, we will have Miyogiryu. And on the west side, we will have Ikioi. Uh, both of those guys had six and nine records. Oh, no, sorry. Ikioi had a five and ten record from Maigashira 9, and Miyogiryu was six and nine from Maigashira 10. Uh, so nice, comfortable resting spot for both of those guys. And then. At Maigashir 15, we finally get to some of our Jurio Rikshi that are going to be promoted here. So on the east side, I've got Kyoku Taisei, who is the guy who won the Jurio Yusho with a 12-3 and record from the Jurio 5 rank. And then on the west side, I have Meisei, who was 9-6 and six at the top Jurio rank. Uh, so Kyoku Taisei probably a little under promoted based on his record and where he was ranked. Uh, but 
we kind of learning from the past and we're going to under promote our Jerio guys a little bit just based on recent precedent where it seems like they really have not been promoted very highly in the past few years. And then we will move on to Maigashira 16 on the east side. I believe we will have Tochi Noshin and on the west side, we will have Dayamami, another Jerio guy coming up. So Tochi Noshin has a record that's deserving of demotion to Jurio uh, with that 4-11 and 11 record for Maigashira at 11, but there are just a lack of Rikshi available to take his spot in the Makauchi division. Uh, so the only Rikshi that could challenge for his spot are Maigashira 6 Hoshoryu with a 9-6 and 6 record or Maigashira 7 Sudugishu with a or Sudugisho with a 10 and 5 record. Uh, you mean uh, you mean those guys are Jurio? Yeah, yeah, sorry. So Jurio 6 Hoshoryu and Jurio 7 Sudugisho. Uh, but that would be a very generous promotion for either of those guys. And once again, we're gonna kind of give the benefit of the doubt to the guy that's in Makuuchi. Uh so Hoshoryu and Sudugisho should be towards the top of the Jurio rankings uh, for the Natsgoya Basho, uh, but not quite going to make it up into Makauchi quite yet. Uh, Dayamami, he had a 10 and 5 record from the Jurio 4 rank, by the way. And then our final rank is going to be Maigashira 17. And on the east side there, we will have Kyoku, Kyoku Shuho. That's a tough one. Kyoku Shuho. There we go. <laughs> uh, and we will have the return of Ichinojo, I believe. So, Q, geez, Kyoku Shuho should get promoted. <laughs> uh, he's kind of a borderline guy. There are four locks to be demoted to Jurio from Makuuchi, and that is Chiyomaru, who had a 5-10 and 10 record from Magashira 15. He's got to go. Koto Waco had a 5-10 and 10 record from Magashira 16. He's got to go. Terano Fuji, winless at Magashira 17. He needs to go. And Koto Yuki, 6-9 and nine at the bottom Makauchi rank. He's got to go. So all four of those guys guaranteed demotions down to Jurio. But there's only three obvious Rikshi to be promoted from Jurio, and those are the three guys that we've already talked about in Dayamami, Kyoku Taisei, and Meisei. Uh, so, you know, if... Uh... If losing Terano Fuji and Chiyomaru is the cost of getting Koto Yuki the hell out of my top division, I'll have to take it. <laughs> I think there's quite a few people who would be against you on that. And that's that's obviously a really greedy move for you, Jake. <laughs> Those uh, are two very popular Rikshi to get rid of Koto Yuki, who seemingly only you has a vendetta against. Yeah, but it's a pretty strong one. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, But yeah, Kyoku Shuho... With an 8-7 and seven record from Jurio 3, he's really our next eligible guy that could be pulled up. So he's getting a little bit lucky here, I believe, uh, to be pulled up into the Makauchi division at uh, Makauchi se- or Magashira 17 on the east side. And then Ichinojo, like we said, there's four guaranteed cases going down to Jurio. Ichinojo would make our fifth Jurio promotion. Uh, so who is the fifth guy that is dropping out of the Makauchi division? I have that as Kaisei, who had a 3-12 and record from Magashira 10. And it was a really close call for me whether to keep Kaisei at the bottom of the uh, Makauchi division here or to bring up Ichinojo, who had a 9-6 and record from Jurio 5. So that's a, that's a rather generous promotion there. And so I was originally leaning towards Kaisei, but then I did some research on sumo db and found that the last 15 rikshi that were ranked maigashira 10 and had a 3 and 12 record all got sent down to jurio and that's going all the way back to 1963 uh so this time instead of going counter to history i decided to side with history and boot him down to jurio in my prediction it's going to be interesting to see how they treat that whole thing uh, on the official Bonds K with like Kaisei and Tochi Noshin being in similar situations. Yeah, so Tochi Noshin, he had a better record than Kaisei here. Uh, so I think that's that one last win that he got on the final day is saving him from demotion to Jurio and sure. the fact that there just aren't any more deserving cases to take Tochi Noshin's spot. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, if I uh, if if in this 
strange situation of Bondscape prediction. If I were to pick, you you generally have me pick what I think you got wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I think that um, a, a, a likely spot where they could surprise us here is the whole Kaisei and Tochi notion and all the potential. It, it feels like there's more guys on the border of being promoted or demoted than there are often uh, than than often is the case. So yeah, I, I would if I had to put money on it, I'd say that's probably where uh, they're going to surprise us. All right, Mister, trying to say that I'm wrong here. What would you do instead? Oh no, no, that's not that's not why I speak up. <laughs> I I only criticize. I don't actually put myself out there for criticism. You, you You're not a understand. solutions man. No, but I I I feel like I have a pretty solid guess at determining the problem. <laughs> so my work here is done. All right. Well, that was no help whatsoever. <laughs> so just to review, we talked about the five guys that came up from Jurio, or that I predict will come up from Jurio, and Kyoku Taisei, Meisei, Daimami, Kyoku Shuho, and Ichinojo. And our five guys dropping out of the Makauchi division would be Kaisei, Chiyomaru, Kotoeko, Terano Fuji, and Koto Yuki. Uh, so overall, I believe that this is going to be a fairly accurate Bonds K prediction on my part. <laughs> like I, well, I mean, like I said, there's everything just kind of falls into place for the most part. There's a couple of spots where maybe I misjudged, but I don't think I'm going to have anybody off by a significant margin just because the there aren't any crazy records like I've missed in the past Tomokaze and Koto Yuki who were both Maegashira 3 had 0 and 15 records dropped all the way down to Jurio and I think I had both of those guys staying in Makuuchi or like uh, Toku Shoryu who had the 14-1 record for Maegashira 14 I think I missed him by a couple of ranks and how far they were going to promote him there's no cases like that on this Bonds K everybody has more reasonable records and the reasonable records are a lot easier to predict what's going to happen. So everything just kind of falls into line here. And in fact, I I'm going to venture a guess to see this is going to be my first ever perfect bonds K prediction. Uh, I just, I, I feel confident (laughs) in the decisions that I took where there might be a little bit of tough decisions, but I, I feel like I did a good job here and, I don't think that there's anybody that will ever be able to tell me that this prediction is wrong. You know, you might be onto something there. <laughs> so, Jake, oh, you kind of jumped the gun, and this is where I usually ask you uh, what my pred- worst prediction will be, which we've already discussed. There won't be a bad prediction on here because it'll be perfect. But you've had you've had a couple minutes to sit. Do you still think that? Tochi no Sheen is my worst prediction. I didn't say that. I, I said I said that combination and the the promotions and demotions. I left it vague enough so that I can claim that I was right either way. All right. Um, well, you, you got to be a little bit more specific now. Put your money where your mouth is. All right. Well, um, let's see. I because it will matter so much. I would say that. Uh, um, I don't think Kaisei will be dropped to Jurio if. And Tochi Notion not drop to Jurio. I don't think that. Uh, let's see. I, I would say it's more likely that uh, Tochi Notion gets dropped and Kaisei doesn't. How about that? You're wrong, but you're entitled to your opinion. Yeah. Well, that's why we do this whole this whole episode <laughs> for you, isn't it? Oh yeah, this is purely <laughs> to stroke my ego. Yep. And uh, yeah, uh, your your perfect Bonds K. It it could be this time. It will be this time. I, I guarantee it. <laughs> it. The only thing that could prevent this from being a perfect Bonds K is if we're just living in some sort of crazy computer simulation and they just like turn the computer off before they ever reveal what this Bonds K would be. I know that's getting real philosophical and might freak some people out because I know there's some people out there like, oh, what if we all live in a simulation? Not the case here. Obviously, we're going to find <laughs> out the results of oh, this yeah, Bonds yeah, K. Yeah. Obviously, yep. Uh, but with that being said, that that's all I got for this Not Goya Bonds K prediction. So if you enjoy this podcast, you can leave us a five-star review at Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast listening service. You can find us on Twitter, where we will tweet out a picture of uh, our Bonds K prediction as usual. Also, Facebook, Instagram, and all that. 
Uh, if you want to look back through the entire Basho and all the posts that we were making, uh, you can find that all on our blog, grandsumobreakdown.wordpress.com. And if you have any comments, questions, or not concerns, what's the third thing? Corrections. Corrections. <laughs> you can send us an email at grandsumobreakdown at gmail.com, or you can leave us a voicemail at 805-613-7866. That is 805-613-SUMO. Is it, is it time, Jake? Can we finally drop the charade and turn the machine off and step yeah. back into reality? Yeah, um, it, it's going to make some crazy sound effects. Um, so, yeah, here we go. Uh, Ryan, Ryan, provide the sound effects for us, please. Yep. Power off. That sounded like a chicken in there somewhere. But uh, the simulation <laughs> machine is officially powered down. I. Uh, I don't feel very different. Yeah, no. Uh, I just feel like we're coming off of a couple straight weeks of incredibly stressful and strenuous work putting it all together. Yeah, let me check the news while we were out. Did anything happen? To- oh, my God. 2020 is continuing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no. no. <laughs> we shouldn't have tuned out for two months. <laughs> Are you saying that we caused this by being gone? Uh, everything was fine in the simulation. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fair point. Oh no. And now my cat has diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually true. I'm going to go ahead and dedicate this uh this episode to me and Kiff's future of uh of daily insulin shots that I'm sure he is going to love. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with that. Yeah. So yeah, the next time next time you guys hear from us, I think we are going to be doing an episode where we talk about what all went into creating the not so basho uh kind of how we determined who would win each match who would face each other uh everything that went into it our our labor of love that we put on for two straight weeks and had a real good time doing it as stressful as it was so keep an eye out for that in the next few days i am so glad there are four of us (laughs) yeah no kidding what do you do when they can't make sumo? You get your friends together and you fake some sumo. Hey, 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 yeah, yeah. It's the not so, not so basho. Not so basho, basho, yeah. Not so, not so basho. Not so basho, yeah.